In this video, we'll be covering how to prepare pre-supported STLs and OBJ files. I'm using Cheetubox 1.9.3 in this video, but the steps and buttons are in the same locations for the new 2.0 version. I have run across some pre-supported models that failed to print, and had to add a few additional supports of my own here and there. Though, to be fair, this only happened twice out of printing over 100 models. Before printing, I like to get the models to a scale I'm happy with. Sometimes the miniatures will have a scale in their name, such as 28mm or 32mm, but even still, they may be slightly too big or too small. For example, I know this sniper is of a scale that is good to print as he is, however this Harlock miniature would be a lot taller than I would want. So I rotate them both until they stand upright and then put their feet on an even plane. I then play with the size and make a note of how much I scaled them back, and then hit Ctrl Z to undo the rotations, and that's when I finally scale him to the size I want, in this case reducing his height by 7%. I make sure to lock his ratio so his proportions do not become skewed. From this point forward, Harlock will act as my gauge for each miniature that I add to the plate. For instance, standing next to this dwarf tells me this dwarf is far too tall, so I shrink him down as well, though I'm careful not to shrink him down too much. I want him to be shorter than Harlock, but still noticeably bigger than the goblins. With the miniature size to how I want, I move my comparison model to the side, and then I move the rest to the far end of the plate to make even more room for more models. I repeat this until I have a full plate, as seen here. I recommend not using the hollow button for most pre-supported miniatures, especially small ones like these, as you will likely not be able to add drain holes. If you cannot add a drain hole and then you still hollow it out, it will still save you some resin, but the inside will never cure, and any loose, uncured resin trapped inside can lead to weak spots, and if it breaks, the toxic chemical may leak out. I would instead skip straight to clicking on Slice. I then select the settings I want at the bottom and immediately take a screenshot, and then I save that screenshot. Let's stop here for a moment and discuss some settings. Keep in mind that everything I'm about to say is from my experience with a resin printer like the Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K. This may not be relevant for other resin printers or for filament printers. The first thing I look at is the time. This is an estimate of how long it takes to print. The key word here is estimate. I've had a long print take 3 hours longer than expected. The estimated time is directly affected by the settings at the bottom of this screen. The bottom exposure time. This is how long the resin is exposed to the UV light on the very first layer or first few layers. This must be a lot higher than the exposure time for any subsequent layer as this is what ensures a print stays on the plate. If it were to fall off into the vat, not only will you end up with a failed print, but then you'll have to clean your vat and remove the failed bits now floating around and the failed bits stuck to the bottom of the vat. With that said, don't just crank it all the way up, as if it's too high the resin may get stuck to the bottom of the vat instead of on the plate. Excessively high bottom exposure times can also make it difficult to remove your prints from the plate once it's been finished. For me personally, with the Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K, I typically use between 28 and 35 seconds of exposure time, especially for very large busts. Next is the exposure time. This is how long each layer is exposed to UV light after the first initial layers. The longer this is, the harder the model will be. But if your exposure time is too hard, it can also make your model brittle. The rest of the settings you'll typically leave at factory default, at least for your first prints. Faster raising and lowering speeds may reduce your total print time, but it can cause bad prints if it's too fast, due to not allowing enough time for the resin to resettle after the plate leaves the vat. Together, all of these settings, longer exposure times, the further lift distance, and slower the lift speeds are, these all grossly affect the time it takes to print a project. 3D printers print in layers, so with the setting shown on the screen, once the plate lowers to the bottom of the vat for the first time, it'll cook the resin for 35 seconds. Then it'll move up at the speed set and the height you've set, and that will complete one layer cycle. Then it'll repeat this process, now using the exposure time for the rest of the project. 
This project has 1,497 layers, so that's how many times this is going to repeat. The number of layers is determined by how tall the model is, or in this case, how tall the tallest miniature on the plate is. Height is the only dimension that matters in regards to print time. Doesn't matter how wide or thick the model is. Now with that said, height is subjective. If you turn a model on its side, then its width is now going to be its height. It doesn't matter how many models I'm printing. All that's going to factor in for the time is the tallest one. If I were to print 9 models that were 4 inches tall along with a 10 inch tall model, it would take the exact amount of time it would if I were only printing the 10 inch model by itself. So if you find yourself about to print a single large bust, if you have empty room on the plate, toss some small models around it. It'll save you time as you'll be more efficiently using that space that would otherwise be ignored while printing that bust. Just keep in mind the more models you print at once, the more resin that will be needed. The final thing we're going to look at at this screen is the volume. This is how much resin is estimated to use for this print job. This is crucial to keep up with so you'll know if you have to refill the vat in the middle of a print. The vat for the Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K is somewhere between 650 and 750 milliliters. I just assume it's 500 to be safe. And that'll ensure I always have enough resin in the vat to complete a full layer. With that in mind, the largest print I had thus far used 269 milliliters. By keeping track of the volumes you print, particularly the highest one, you'll know for sure if you're safe to let it run without refilling your print job in the middle of the print. I then click save and rename the file. I personally create a separate folder for each print job and store the STL or OBJ files in that folder along with the screenshot of the settings I used and the CTB file that I just saved. I also create a copy of the .cheetahbox project file before I slice it. I do this that way if a few of these miniatures fail to print, I would remove them from the .cheetahbox file and then save it in a separate project. I then move those two failed miniatures to my next batch process and try again later with other miniatures instead of reprinting all of the ones that were successful along with the two failed ones. When I'm ready to print, I just copy the .ctb file I saved to a thumb drive and upload it to the printer, or if your 3D printer and your computer are connected to the same network, you may be able to use the network sending to queue up your next project. I originally planned on lumping in creating my own supports into this video as well, but to keep the total run time short, I'll be covering manual supports in a future video instead. I also mentioned at the very beginning of this video that some pre-supported models will need additional supports. There's a way to check if you need those additional supports, but that'll be part of the next video as well. And with that said, that'll bring this to its inevitable end. I hope you learned something or inspired to get into 3D printing or to try Cheetah Box if you use other slicers such as Lychee. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and you would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.